In this short tutorial, I want to show you a neat feature of Title Studio that can enhance your titles and lower thirds. It's standard to allow a border to be applied to various objects, but Title Studio allows you to animate that border. It's not very straightforward how to do this, but this tutorial will hopefully explain the procedure. I'm using Title Studio within Continuum 2022. Your version's UI may be different. A word of warning though before I start. The animation of a border on a circular object causes some flickering of the border under certain conditions. This has been reported to Boris FX. You will be aware of this flickering issue as I proceed through the tutorial. I'll be using a circular object to demonstrate border animation because some parameters are easier to understand in a circular context. I'll make a start by creating a shape, and as usual, I'll first delete the default text object. As I mentioned in the introduction, I'll be using a circle for the shape. I want the fill colour to be something other than white. Now to apply the border. The border colour will be white with an edge width of 20. So that's the border applied. Now for the animation. This involves the use of the last three parameters in this tab. Before a demonstration, I need to talk about these three parameters. Like many aspects of Title Studio, their functionality can leave you scratching your head in puzzlement. Describing these functions is difficult, but as usual, I'll do my best. Let's consider the situation where the animated border is to make one full circuit of the total perimeter of an object during the full length of the timeline. In this situation, the total perimeter is represented by the value 100. You notice I said total perimeter. This means if it's an object with an inside and an outside perimeter, such as a text character, the two perimeters add up to 100. Now the two parameters, that's border begin and border end, both have minimum and maximum values of minus a thousand and plus a thousand. Any value greater than 100 or less than zero will have an effect on how many circuits the border will make around the total periphery and the direction of travel. More on this later. In the meantime, I'll concentrate on values between zero and 100. To simplify matters further, I'll deal with the two parameters individually. Border begin. This parameter value determines how the border will animate. This will become clear, hopefully, when I demonstrate its usage. If we consider the situation mentioned earlier, where the whole timeline is used for the animation, the border begin parameter will be either 0 or 100 at the start of the timeline. Consequently, for animation to take place, the border begin parameter at the end of the timeline will be either 100 or 0 respectively. Let's see what happens when the border begin parameter is set to 0 and 100.
can see that the border is complete initially. Then the end of the border starts animating clockwise from the zero position. Did you notice the flickering during the last 15 or so degrees of the animation? This is the issue I talked about in the introduction. Now let's carry out the animation with the border begin parameter set to 100 and 0. The border initially is absent, then proceeds to animate anti-clockwise from the 100 position. Of course the 0 and 100 positions are essentially the same. It's their orientation at the start and end of the timeline that determines the border's direction of travel. Again the border flickers in the first 15 degrees of travel. The border end. This parameter also determines how the border will animate. Let's carry out the same procedure as we did for the border begin parameter. You can see that the border is absent this time at the start, then proceeds to animate in the clockwise direction. You'll notice this time that there's no flickering. Now let's carry out the animation with the border begin parameter set to 100 and 0. The border is complete initially, then animates in an anti-clockwise direction. Again, no flickering. So that's how the two parameters work individually. From the observations, it's obvious that they work in opposition. It starts getting interested when they are made to work together. Let's consider a situation where the border begin parameter at the start of the timeline is 25 and 125 at the end. I'll also set the border end parameter to 0 at the start and 100 at the end.
border rotates clockwise with 25% of it missing. This is because at any point on the timeline there's a difference of 25 between the two parameter values. You notice I had to enter 125 for the border begin at the end of the timeline. This is because the 25 and 125 points on the periphery are essentially the same. If I had entered 25 instead of 125, the border begin would not have animated. If you set the parameters so that they vary throughout the timeline, you can get some interesting results. If you want the animation to be shorter, or to occur at points other than the start and end of the timeline, you need to set keyframes. Don't forget though to set the interpolation to linear and hold at the appropriate keyframes. Now that's the basic concept. More variations in the animation can be achieved by entering values greater than 100 and less than 0 into the begin and end parameters. For instance, if 200 is entered, the animation will be completed twice through the timeline. If minus 200 is entered, the animation will still complete twice, but it will be in the reverse direction. Finally, a few words about the third parameter, the border offset. As its name implies, this parameter will offset the start of the animation by the value entered. A positive value will offset the animation in a clockwise direction, and a negative value in an anticlockwise direction.
So that's border animation, a neat feature that can enhance your titles and lower thirds. A little difficult to grasp, but let's face it, so are many other features of Title Studio. And don't forget, you can animate borders on text as well. Join me if you can for my next tutorial. Until then, bye for now.